Medicine and therapeutics in the future will be safer and more effective because of advancements in artificial intelligence. So if you're sick or have a loved one who is, artificial intelligence is making a big difference in the way that scientists understand the human body and the life all around us. So in the last couple of years, AI researchers at Google and Facebook have made incredible progress in predicting the 3D structure of proteins. And there is a mind-blowing amount, trillions and trillions of proteins floating around in all of the cells in our body, making us move, making us think, making all of the life and animals around us actually function. Form is function when it comes to proteins. Scientists are now using artificial intelligence to simply read the DNA, understand the amino acid sequence, and then make a prediction into how that will fold. That problem is extremely hard to solve, and now that it is being solved at a high accuracy level, we now have a vital tool to help us understand how to combat illness and disease. So quick little biology reminder, we are full of DNA, it's the blueprint to life, and our body reads that blueprint, that DNA, to make proteins. So proteins are made from amino acids. The DNA that we have actually tell the body which amino acids to connect together. But here's where it gets tricky. Even though we often can figure out from the DNA what amino acids are being used, it's not so easy to connect them and understand the way that they're gonna fold together in a three-dimensional space. So it's like DNA is this blueprint, right? This book of life, and it tells you everything that you need to know about how the body should work and what to build, it's blueprints. So you take a book like On Intelligence by Jeff Hawkins, when you read it, you need something to copy it onto. Those are the amino acids, and when you pull them out, whoosh, they just come together in some kind of 3D shape. And it's not entirely clear by understanding what cards are actually connected together in this case, exactly how they're gonna fold together. It's kind of two-dimensional, but you know what I mean? I'll just bend them together, just forget it. For the example, I can ruin a few cards. Don't tell Jen. So this is our amino acid sequence, and then this is our protein, right? It bends right here, there's a crease there. The fact that if I dropped it, it would have like a tendency to fall in a certain direction. This kind of thing, that's the way like a protein is kind of moving around, ah, uh, moving around in your body and interacting with things. And the shape is extremely important. This shape has evolved for millions and millions and millions of years in different species in the whole chain of life to do something, right? It's meant to increase a gradient of some kind of salt, or it's meant to clean the cell somehow, or it's meant to connect with something else and catalyze something. It just, it's so, so important that we know what the shape is, and it's so hard to find out what the shape is, but there's patterns that can be found, and AI is helping us find those patterns. The cool thing is once we have a map of how all of the proteins fold and their three-dimensional structure, we can start asking questions about what proteins, when they're misfolded, actually harm us and which ones are just like, meh, it's okay, you can live with it. We said meh, M-E-H, meh. Or what does the healthy profile of somebody who has almost all of their proteins folding correctly look like? From there, we can diagnose diseases. So before AI stepped onto the scene and we wanted to find out the shape of these proteins, there wasn't a lot of great tools. There were some really slow and expensive methods. You might remember some of them from like a college level OCHEM class, but they were pretty forgettable. It was stuff like X-ray crystallography, cryo-electron microscopy, and nuclear magnetic resonance that we all learned and forgot about in college. Now these techniques have been around for a while and over the last 60 years, they have given us the shape of about 170,000 proteins. But honestly, it's just peanuts. It's drops of water in the ocean that is all of the proteins that make all of life around us tick. But we do have some pretty awesome tools for figuring out the code of life. DNA is something that we're starting to get pretty familiar with. And from that DNA, we know what amino acids they encode for. And this is where AI steps in, because we can use the first 170,000 proteins that we know of as an example. We can say to a neural network, basically works like a brain, we can say, hey, here is 
the amino acid sequence, and here is the resulting shape. And here's a whole bunch of data to train on. So now can we start giving it actually new amino acid sets and it can predict structures that are accurate to the real world? Yes, we can. But first, let's talk about why the protein folding problem was so unsolvable until AI showed up a few years ago. And to do that, we need to talk about something called Leventhal's paradox. So in 1969, a man named Cyrus Leventhal pointed out that because amino acids can fold in any direction, it's called the degree of freedom, and they have many degrees of freedom that they can fold, they become extremely hard to predict on a classical computer. He calculated that the astronomical number of possible shapes to be 10 to the 300th. And that's way beyond all of the stars in the universe and all of the grains of sand on all of the beaches on all of Earth. It is a truly astronomical number. There's just no classical computer that could do it before time in the universe expired. And the weird thing is that a simple amino acid chain, maybe even 40 or 50 amino acids stuck together, You'd think that there might only be so many ways they could fold together, but it's just not true. There's limitless ways that they could fold together. However, there is only one way that it will fold. Every single time, the same amino acid chain, it will fold the same way. And before, when I said it happens really quickly inside our human bodies, I'm talking about milliseconds or even microsecond timescales. They just suck together, like they just crumple in. Actually, let me go get another sheet of paper. I like that, that crunch. Millisecond. M microsecond. But now let's talk about why AI makes sense. So if there's like a common thread on this entire channel, it's that the reason why AI is different from classical computing is its ability to learn. And what's interesting about conceptually learning, what you're doing is you're taking this kind of unstructured world and you're putting some definitions around it, some definitions that either rarely or never break. And that starts making the space of possibilities smaller and smaller and smaller. I like to use the term approximating a function, but I know that's not something that will just like resonate with everyone. But the way I imagine it is you might have this like funky shaped kind of thing, right? That you want to solve. And the thing is mathematics is so tightly tied to geometry and shape. It's just absolutely incredible. So I think we should try to use that as a little bit of a metaphor because I kind of imagine something that's kind of a funky shape like this, right? Imagine it's a little bit hollow in the inside and I put a balloon in there and then as I blow the balloon up, the balloon kind of goes in all the crevices and sort of fills in all of the spots. That's what's happening when we're training a neural network. There's some dimensional space and it's kind of sort of filling it in. And once you have that space, then it's something that you can put inputs into and it knows the constraints. And it's not truly a space inside of my head or inside of a machine. It's actually just ones and zeros that represent kind of weights and biases that push and pull in this dimensional space to make that shape. I mean, that's why AI is so mind blowing. That's why this channel is something I wanted to devote all my time to because I just don't know if the average person is getting it. That's why I'm gonna pound this message home to anyone who will listen, but AI is the great universal finder of structure. And that's how our brains work. We have connections, they're weights and biases that are constantly adjusted based on what comes into our eyes and into our ears. And if you actually ask me, what do I think consciousness is? I use that as my framework. For me, the feeling of being human is our ability to create structure in an unstructured world. It's in our mind, but we do have structure here. We see patterns, we can predict accurately how the physics of the world works. But we had to learn that, just like this AI needs to learn about the protein. And that brings us to today's sponsor, Human Consciousness, because it's pretty much the only thing that will sponsor our channel when we only have 526 subscribers. Now back to the video. All right, so we have a classic battle, Google versus Facebook here. Google was first out the gate, so let's talk about what they achieved in protein folding first. I'm going to read an email. Uh, I got this from John Malt. I'll just read it. It says, John, as I expect you know, your group has performed amazingly well in CAS 14, both relative to other groups and in absolute model accuracy. Congratulations on this work. It is really outstanding. AlphaFold represents a huge leap forward. So in the world of AI protein folding, up until just this week, Google was the undisputed leader. 
So Google, which is now formally called Alphabet, has ownership over a London-based AI company called DeepMind. And in 2018, they decided to start working on this protein folding problem. The software they use is called AlphaFold. By 2022, it was by far the most accurate system for predicting protein structure. The team achieved a level of accuracy much higher than any other group. And they were so successful that scientists who have spent their entire career studying the protein folding problem called it astounding and transformational. You know, these results were, for me, having worked on this problem so long, after many, many stops and starts, and will this ever get there? Suddenly, this is a solution. We solved the problem. But as all good tech rivalries go, Meta, formerly Facebook, decided to throw their AI into the ring this year. Now, Meta has a different set of AI expertise and a lot of different skills than the Google DeepMind team because their data is more related to social networks. So I'm not sure if they just had like a chip on their shoulder or something, but I was definitely surprised. I didn't think there was anyone at Meta who would even care about this kind of a problem. But this week, they announced that they had predicted the structure of more than 617 million proteins, and they did all of that in just two weeks of processing. And that's a good deal faster than what AlphaFold can do. AlphaFold will often take up to a full minute to put a single protein prediction out there. Now, obviously, when you have a whole ocean of protein shapes that you need to predict, a speed boost is an improvement, but that's not really the main point here. Meta's approach for the entire system, the way the algorithm was trained, was just completely different from AlphaFold's. And that is where I get to the punchline. So Google's AlphaFold is what's called a convolutional neural network. So from here on out, we'll call them CNNs, but convolutional neural networks are interesting because they take in an image and they have layers where they assign importance to patterns, to characteristics, to features that they see in the images. The simplification in the connections means the network upholds the spatial aspect of the data set. What's interesting about CNNs is they were inspired by the human brain and the way our visual cortex works. In our brain, individual neurons respond to stimuli only in a restricted region of the visual field, which we call the receptive field. Convolutional neural networks work differently as they treat data as spatial. So Facebook specializes in social media data. So for them, they thought of it more as a language translation problem. And the way they went about predicting the protein structure is by using what's called a large language model. So they treated the amino acid sequence as a language. And so like translating from French to Spanish, they translated the language of amino acids into the language of protein structure and shape. I know, and that's why I was kind of like, when I read it, I was like, well, there's no language that's three-dimensional shape, so I'm surprised this worked. So large language models are fed large volumes of text. Books, Wikipedia, the internet, all of the ways that people communicate through written language, and the same way that you can take all of the text written in English and just break it down to the 26 letters in the alphabet, they just did the same thing, but they took the 20 amino acids and essentially signed them a letter, and they thought of it just like a new language. And in the same way, you might use something like autocomplete, like it is cold, and then the computer might suggest outside, because that's how it's most commonly used. They started typing in the amino acid sequence that they knew of, and then just asked for the structure that it would see. And it actually works, and it's faster. Like, you know, like to say, like, here's a couple sentences, right? And then you put that into a machine, and instead of getting sentences in another language out, you end up getting this thing, right? And, it, and it's accurate. And it's like, oh, I can predict from those that it'll be this, and I, but then I can predict from this other page that it's gonna be like a shape a little bit different like that. And it's just crazy that it works. So I just found it interesting that the way we think about language could actually translate into something that's actually happening inside of our body and that it would have a high accuracy. And one of the things that I love about learning about artificial intelligence and doing this channel is that every day I feel like I'm learning more about myself and the people around me. And these machines are really starting to reflect back the intelligence that I used to never see in computers. And as promised, here is an image generated by AI text to image prompt for popcorn popping out of a burrito or popcorn tacos as requested in the comment section of the last video by Anessa Edits. Thanks for the prompt. 
And if you have an image prompt that you want me to use at the end of the next video, put it in the comment section below, keep your proteins folded properly.